Aloha, my name is Kevin Kimball. I'm an Associate Professor of Accounting and the purpose of this video is to step you through a file named Spreadsheet Formatting Rules of Thumb. This file is available to you in Blackboard under the Materials tab for the Accounting 386 course or in the Accounting 232B course. Whenever you create any type of report you should consider your users and that's the same for uh, anything you create in a spreadsheet. You should format your spreadsheet in a format that will be easy on the eyes, quickly understood, errorless, and self-checking, or as we call it in the profession, self-auditing. Some general format rules are that you should include a title of the spreadsheet at the top as well as its date. So as you can see here, here's the uh, title of it as well as its date. You should also include a description that helps the user know the purpose of the spreadsheet. So here's the purpose. The purpose of this worksheet is to compute the fixed payment for a mortgage at a specified rate for a specified period. It's also helpful to know who the preparer of the spreadsheet is because often the, the person who receives the report might have questions and it's always good to be able to go back and find out who created the spreadsheet to help ensure that they fully understand it. Another ni nice thing is when this uh, file gets, pre when this uh, report gets printed out, um, someone might receive this report and maybe pull it up six months later and think, oh, I'd really like to open up that digital file and make changes or whatever. And uh, if you don't know the name of the file or where it's been saved, it's going to be very difficult for that person to find it again, especially if the original creator has moved on. So what you can do is you can go into the page layout ribbon you can click on page setup and here you see header footer. If you click on header footer you can choose to make a custom header or a custom footer. As you can see I've done a custom footer and I'll show you how I did that. I create, uh, click on custom footer and there's different types of uh, information you can put in here. For example if you want to have the page number you can just click on this and it inserts the page number. I'm going to delete that one of the ones you see here is insert file path. So I'll put it here in the center section even though I already have it here on the side, but that's what that is. Is It puts in code to enter the path, which is what folder it's been stored, stored in, and the file name. So I'm going to delete that and uh, hit OK. As you can see, this is the file path and the name of that, of that file, and this is what it'll look like at the footer of each printed page. So I recommend that you do that so that uh, when it does get printed out, people can find that file again. Let's move on down. The two basic sections of a spreadsheet are the data section, which is this here, which is usually toward the top of the spreadsheet and allows the user to quickly enter independent variables. As you can see here, I've, I've color-coded the independent variables. So what this does for me is it helps me indicate to the user that they will be inputting these values. I'm going to need to change the size of this spreadsheet here so it fits on my screen a little bit better. Bring that back down so that we can uh, fit that all on here. So anyway, um, as you can see the color-coded items uh, up here it is a, a hard-coded value, so someone has actually typed in 750,000. But as you go down further, this is a computation which takes the 750,000 times 30 percent to determine the down payment amount. So uh, in your data section, the key thing is you want to indicate what the independent variables are, and um, they will then be used in the report section or the answer section, which is down below. The answer section should be fully dependent on the uh, the data section up above. So in this answer section, these values come from formulas which are dependent on the values up above. Um, so that's what the uh, report section is. Uh, the reason you want to do that is so that you can change any of these values. Let's say the home price is a million dollars. Let's just see what the current payment is. It's almost three thousand dollars. But if we bump this up to a million dollars, you can see that the payment goes up to almost four thousand dollars. I'm going to hit control Z to go back to the uh, former value. 
Uh, but that's the big idea uh, with the data section and answer, answer section. You want to ensure that these are variables that the user will be changing, and then the answer section and anything else that's not a, an independent variable will be dependent on that to come to the report solution. You want to keep your presentation clean. You don't want to add unnecessary and unusually striking color formats or unusual fonts or font sizes. Uh, you want to keep the fonts and font sizes consistent unless special emphasis is necessary to enhance the user's understanding. One thing I, I might do just now is I'm going to go ahead and format this as a data table. So I'm going to click Home and Format as a Table. And I'll do maybe just a light coloring. And the nice thing about this is now uh, as you skim through you can see um, maybe these lines a little bit better and line things up. And also this allows you to filter so maybe if you wanted to see um, you know what the payment was in, in period 8 you can just click that and this filters it for uh, period 8. But anyway I'll, I'll go ahead and select all again hit OK. Uh, but that's a helpful uh, thing in at least the color coding that you do. It, it's not unusually striking, it's not distracting, it actually helps the readability, especially if this is especially wide. Um, moving on down, normally you should use the protection feature to lock any cells that the average user should not be allowed to change. For example, if I go up to the top here in the uh, data section, I do want the user to be able to change these colored values, but I don't want them to change um, these uh, down payment or loan amount values because these are formulas. If I hit F2 you can see these are formulas and I don't want the user to mess with those formulas. So um, if you right click what you can do is you can highlight the cells that you want the user to be able to change. So I'm going to go down a little bit further here and make sure I've got these all uh, selected. So I'm going to, going to control click, control click, control click. I'm holding the control button down. Click click, click. So now I've selected all these and then what you can do is you can right click and you can format the cells. And over here there's protection and you want to remove the check mark for locked. The default setting for all cells is that they're locked and so if you want them to be unlocked you've got to remove that. Um, now that change I made uh, doesn't affect anything because I can go out here and type anything I want and it doesn't stop me. I can uh, type right over my formulas and it doesn't stop me. I'm going to control Z that uh, to undo. Uh, so what you need to do is you ne then need to you then need to um, set the protection. So you go up to review and you protect sheet. And uh, I don't want people I, w I want people to be able to select the unlock cells but I don't want them to be able to select the lock cells. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that that is not checked. You could put in a password. I don't recommend that for this class just because then I need to know your passwords and I don't want to have to uh, deal with that. So if I click on OK, you'll notice I cannot click on any cell now other than these uh, independent variables. So I've effectively locked down the whole spreadsheet uh, and the only thing this person can do is click on these uh, variables uh, that are independent. Now if I want to undo that I can click on unprotect and now we can click anywhere we want we can make changes. So uh, just be aware of that. Uh, sometimes you will want to lock those down. For this class I probably won't require you to lock cells down too much um, because I'll just have to unlock it in order to do my uh, grading. But anyway just be aware that that does exist. You want to properly set your column widths. For example, let's say you accidentally had this uh, too narrow. It would come up looking like this, pound, pound, pound. So what you can do is you can just move your cursor there and double click and it makes it an automatic width that fits your numbers. Another thing you want to be aware of is that you ensure that you use absolute or relative referencing as appropriate. Now you should have already learned about absolute relative referencing and also range naming uh, through this class. Or you will learn that. You should have learned it in Accounting 232B or in your other Excel class, but as you'll notice here in this formula, we use range names to make references to given cells. Or if you look down below, let me see if I've done this down here, you can see in this cell I have an absolute reference to column C, which is this column, and row 14. So what that means is this formula, as you can see, it's the same formula all the way down, and it's always referring to cell C14, so payment will always be 
C14. That's called an absolute reference. Now this other one here, uh, this is a relative reference. You can see I'm referring to cell E19, so the prior balance times the interest rate for a month. And then uh, if I hit enter and you look on the next row, it's E20 and E21. And all I did is I, I wrote the formula here and then I copied it down. And since this is a purely relative reference, it then changed to E20, E21. So uh, that's what that means uh, in this case. Uh, let's move on. Uh, the next one is format the page setup so that when it's printed, it will print properly. What that means is go into your page layout and click on this uh, button down here. Sometimes you might, might want to do a, a landscape format so that you have uh, more room wa uh, in your width for printing, or you'll do a, a portrait. Now, if you want to make sure that the whole report fits on a given page, you can fit two, one page wide and maybe one page tall, or you can see maybe it's two pages wide and one tall. Uh, what this does is it'll condense the printing to fit. Another thing you can do is on your sheet itself, you can have the um, printing repeat certain rows. Uh, as you can see, this is a, a mortgage amortization that's going to go 360 months, and we want to have these titles for month, payment, interest, principal to repeat uh, on each printed page. And so if you look at the print preview here, you might have to uh, change that a little bit. Let me go back just one second. I'm back in the page setup. As you can see, I left this on fit to one page wide, one page tall. That's why that, that was so condensed print. If we go back to adjust to normal size, um, and I'll put that at 100%. Now, now I'll go back and uh, look at the print preview here. Okay, so as you can see here, um, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Zoom in and maybe page down. And uh, let me just close that for a second. Oh, I can go to the next page here. That's what I want to do. And I'll go up a little bit. As you can see here, um, month 29 has the titles. And if I go next page, month 77. So what I've done is in my page setup, go back to my page setup here, in the um, sheet, sorry, in the page, let me cancel out of that so you can get, so you can see it better. I'm going to go, I'll close this print preview. And if you go to the um, page layout, page setup, and if you look at the uh, sheet here, I've asked it to repeat rows row 18, so that means um, every page in this amortization schedule will have these uh, titles there. So it helps you, so you don't have to insert these titles every you know 50 rows or whatever. So that's what that means. Uh, it's very helpful to repeat certain titles, especially if you have multiple rows, you know, over 50 or so rows of data. Moving on, um, and, and by the way, you, you want to have that page printing setup uh, set so that when you send this file to someone and say, oh, let me just print, and they print, that it prints properly for them. They don't have to waste their time going into the page setup and doing that print formatting. Uh, I strongly recommend you don't hard code numbers down here. For example, let's say you, you realize up above that the payment was 2980.89. It wouldn't be very wise to just type 2980.89 here and copy it all the way down because then if you went and changed the uh, mortgage amount to maybe only $100,000, 100000 let me change that to 100000 the payment should only be 397 but if you can see in your answer section, it's still stuck at 2980 because it's been hard-coded. So hard-coding is a no-no in this class, and I hope that makes sense. I'm going to Control-Z that to get us back to where we wanted to be. And let's just see if that's taken care of it. It looks like it has. So we're back to where I wanted to be. And finally, you want to remember to audit your own work. Uh, once you complete your first draft, Step back, look at your numbers and graphs. Does your report make sense? Does it make sense that this payment is almost $3,000 for a loan of $525,000 um, over 30 years at 5.5%? Do you have a feel for those numbers? It's a, it's a common mistake that people just use Excel 
and whatever spits out they assume is right, but that certainly has been proven in, in some very uh, significant cases um, that that's not the case. You know, there's been some uh, f f misreporting of financial numbers in Fortune 500 companies that were simply due to people uh, preparing spreadsheets wrong. Um, another question is, could a user look at this and uh, quickly understand the report and obtain the key figures that they're going to need to make relevant decisions? Do you have check figures to check math errors? Uh, sometimes you'll put check figures off on the side that says, well, um, like you could you could compute the uh, future value of this 525,000 assuming this payment and you could do the future value computation out here on the side and then deduct this balance and if it comes to zero you know that the uh, computation's been done correctly so you can do things like that and that's called self auditing so i hope this has been helpful to you to uh, understand what i mean by the uh, spreadsheet formatting rules of thumb. I recommend that you do, every time you turn in a, an exam to me, I recommend you pull this up and you read it and you make sure your final exam, your, your exam document has, um, your exam file has complied with these spreadsheet formatting rules of thumb because it's always worth about 10% of your grade.